Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome. I'm very pleased to be joined by Fleming Pedersen. Fleming is a senior um, power to x expert and uh, specialist with uh, Greenco Energy. And Greenco Energy is a, 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 a major developer of, of, of projects, and especially now looking at hydrogen projects uh, across the world with some, some very big ambitions. Um, so welcome, Fleming. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. You're, you're going to be one of the speakers, one of the many expert speakers we have at, at World Electrolysis Congress, which is fast approaching us, I think, 4th to the 7th of March in Dusseldorf. And you're working on, on your project. Um, and uh, it's a, I think initial phase one is, is 200 megawatts of, of, a, of a Power to X project and then going to, to phase two, which I think is a huge 1.4 um, gigawatts. So maybe if you want to... Uh, I guess introduce your your sort of background, your work, and 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 the project you're doing, and and maybe outline some of the challenges you're you're facing and indeed overcoming. Yes, I'll uh, I'll be delighted to do that, uh, Nadim. Uh, first of all, I'm uh, I'm a chemist by education. I have a master degree in uh, organic chemistry from uh, University of Aarhus. I also have a bachelor degrees in economics, also from from Aarhus University. Um, then I've worked for almost 20 years in, uh, in uh, food, in the food industry, in uh, health and nutrition, always with uh, NPD, R&D, uh, innovation in, in, in different uh, ways, shapes and forms. And then 10 years ago, I sort of uh, drifted sidewards into energy uh, via biogas, I was um, a department head of uh, one of our agricultural advisories in Denmark, and uh, biogas was very high on the agenda at that point. Uh, during that time, I, I sort of found an interest in the in the value stream that CO two could uh, could present for a biogas project, and I had the good fortune of of uh, working. Um, quite closely with some of the pioneers in Denmark on the conversion of, of CO2 uh, into methanol. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be a, a key, a key um, interest right, right now, I guess. And, and just for people that don't understand, biogas plants, they're sort of somewhat sort of 60 percent is, is the traditional biogas, but I think 40 percent is, is upwards can be of CO2. So they're quite significant um, providers of CO2. Yes. And that's correct. Um, you tend to forget that CO2 is quite heavy. So it's uh, in, a, in terms of tonnage, there's actually more CO2 than there is uh, in methane. Uh, and uh, we are a biogas producing country, Denmark. Where we have a lot of uh, diary industry, a lot of agricultural industry, a lot of waste products, to be honest from uh, agricultural uh, production and and biogas is is pretty advanced in uh, in in Denmark uh, and this co2 sources which is as green as they can be uh, is ex extremely interesting in in terms of uh, producing e fuels and and uh, the refinable product products that uh, everybody's talking about in in the EU at the moment. Yeah. Um, and, and and in terms of the project, where whereabouts are you? I mean, I think yeah, two two hundred megawatts, and it's is it a mix of onshore wind and, and solar? Yes. Uh, the the project I'm I'm um, working on at the moment uh, is uh, a company is called Green Go Energy, and and they are a typical developer. Uh, and at the moment. Uh, they are looking into a first phase of what they call gigaton one. Mm. Uh, that's in Denmark. They also have gigawatt two, three, four, and I think five as well in in uh, in Texas, in Mauritania, in West Africa, in Nigeria. So I mean, there is a there's a lot of activity at the moment, uh, and this the pioneer project here in Denmark uh, is based on the idea of existing PV parks, new erected onshore um, uh, wind turbines, and then, of course, the erection of uh, offshore wind uh, in, in the North Sea. Uh, that's for phase two. Uh, but, but phase one is, is onshore 
uh, wind and uh, PV. And it's mainly existing, but also newly erected uh, energy uh, parks we're looking at. Yeah, and excellent. then, of course, uh, we're looking at these uh, 175 to 200 megawatts of electrolysis, which uh, will have to be turned into uh, to methanol. Uh, the phase two is uh, depending on the pipeline, the hydrogen backbone uh, that that will be uh, uh, started in hopefully 28, 29, something like that. And hopefully we'll be operating 30, 31, something like that. Uh, and, and we hopefully will be able to provide uh, very large quantities of green hydrogen uh, into that pipeline. That, that, that's the idea of the projects. Yeah. And in terms of the, the CO2 part and, and giving your, your experience, you know, you're, um, you know, you're a chemical uh, chemist, sorry, the, um, in terms of collecting it and the, the scale of, of, of biogas or CO2, um, biogenic CO2 coming off the biogas facilities, is it relatively easy to collect them off the biogas plants? I mean, I assume the biogas plants are feeding um, ga gas into the grid or, or, or how, how do you actually collect the gas? What are some of the practicalities of, of, of getting hold of the CO2? Well, many of the the larger biogas plants uh, already have equipment to sort of separate the methane and the CO2. Uh, and uh, of course, the CO2 today is just vented. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is relatively easy. It's known technology to, to collect that, liquefy it or perhaps transported in other uh, in other forms we we are looking into that mm -hmm. some technical solutions uh, which is quite novel at the moment uh, but the the big challenge uh, eventually is that you have to clean biogas uh, biogas will contain uh, contaminants uh, 3 to perhaps 6000 ppm of of sulfur uh, and the the methanol synthesis uh, is very sensitive to, for instance, sulfur mm -hmm. and other uh, compounds as well. Yeah. But there you have to go below, say, 10 ppb or something like that. And, and that cleanup operation and that cleaning of CO2 will probably have to be centralized. Uh, that, that's not going to happen uh, at the individual biogas plant. But the collection, uh, it, the technology is there. So it's a question of the investment, of course. Yeah. But, but the technology is there. And, um, and we are looking into that as part of the project at the moment. Yeah. And in terms of the, the, the project development, Pipeline, sorry, the project development process. Where, whereabouts are you in in developing your project? Have you achieved FID, or are you in the in the pre phases? We at the moment the the phase one of the uh, gigaton projects uh, in in Rengkubing Scan. Uh, we are putting together sort of the jigsaw puzzles. Uh, and eventually we will go to an investor and say, would you like us to uh, to, to put this jigsaw portal together for you? Uh, uh, but at the moment, we're collecting the pieces. We uh, we have looked at land origination and, and are uh, trying to conclude that at the moment. We have already started the uh, first phases of the environmental uh, application process. If you are in into two gigawatts, uh, there are certain implications on on the storage, how large uh, storage, how much intermediate storage you will need, and that depends. The, the application will depend on that, um, and we're trying to optimize that setup. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, but uh, in terms of uh, FID, we are mainly looking at, as I said putting together a project and looking for investors. And that, that's where we are at the moment. We're in, in serious. Uh, we've been through the first round of, of uh, qualification and, and now we're looking at six to 10 uh, investors uh, who we're going into a little more deep conversation with. Yeah. 
And, and obviously there's, there's, I guess, a lot of attention around where the clean hygiene industry is, why, why haven't so many projects got to FID, but given, I guess, the macroeconomic environment, surely it is, yeah, it's a lot challenging now. And I, I think given the some of the indications from the economists, you know, we are entering a new era in, in terms of economics um, than we did certainly from the last last decade in terms of the 2010 to 2020s, where, where we saw the growth effectively of the wind and solar industry and we saw incredibly low interest rates that really really benefited um, the growth of that industry but now we have the clean hydrogen industry going to grow in the, in the 2020s and, and it, it's certainly a much much tougher macroeconomic environment and we've obviously seen impacts certainly in terms of um, inflation in terms of the price, rising price of steel we're seeing obviously problems with Orsted and, and certain bids uh, via the auction systems that have left a lot of sort of project developers exposed. So, what you know, it, it is a tough environment nowadays in terms of developing um, and equally developing and breaking new technology and, and doing that in, in a phased approach, which is obviously what you are doing. Is that just some of the challenges there are, are, are I guess, a lot more considerable and, and they're going to take time? Is, is that your sort of reading of, of the situation in terms of, of, of the macro? economics and the impact it will have on 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 growing the sort of p2x industry clean hydrogen industry etc i think it's it's safe to say that that the ukraine uh incident or war whatever you want to call it uh has uh, has been worse. i think we can call it uh, an incident uh, yeah. the, this catastrophe down there uh, is i mean it's a perfect storm uh that was it's really it's really giving Europe a perspective of what can happen and how uh, how dangerous it is to be relying on uh, too many external sources for energy. Uh, and I think that has been very beneficial for the discussion of, of uh, this green transition in, in Europe. On the other hand, of course, it has given some considerable ripples uh, regarding interest rates, uh, prices on, on raw materials and all that. Uh, but over time, I think that that will find sort of a, a, a reasonable level and, and, and we'll learn to live with that. What is more uh, more complex, I think, is that that this transformation from our existing and very well organized and very uh, efficient logistics we have for power and energy today to sort of bring in a completely new element, and and hydrogen is a different element. Uh, it works differently. It has different challenges, different advantages, different disadvantages. To do that in such an incredibly short period of time is giving you some both economic, of course, but also some very uh, difficult technical issues. The whole logistics around hydrogen uh, is it, it's it's a, it's an enormous uh, project to have this infrastructure change um hydrogen is is a is a very versatile gas but it's also very different from the hydrocarbons we're used to from methane from uh to use gasoline for instance we are talking about e-fuels now methanol uh ammonia you need to develop new uh, new engines you need to develop new uh, fuel cells uh, and at that time, you're also looking at a huge development within electrolysis. I mean, uh, you've been looking at uh, alkaline for a long time, PEMP for a long time, but now all these emerging technologies, uh, and it's incredibly difficult. I, I've tried to monitor that for the last five years because I, I find it extremely fascinating. But to sort of predict which ones will be the prevailing uh, technologies, that's virtually impossible. Yeah, um, yeah, certainly, uh, certainly a lot of innovation happening there. Uh, you know, the technology race, and, and potentially, you know, we'll, we'll see maybe the 
different technologies for, for different niches and, and certainly is a ma- obviously a major area of, of the World Electoral Resources Congress and, and and clearly one of the I guess one of the reasons you're you're going and speaking at it. But um, absolutely absolutely. So yeah, it's been been great talking to you. I think I think yeah, you you really um given us some insight into the challenges of, of developing and we, we wish you um all success in 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 um, the hard yards of developing your projects and and we look forward to helping accelerate um the work you're doing and certainly we'd be keen very much to to track uh, Gringo Energy's um, you know ambitious plans and visionary plans that, that have been laid out certainly certainly around your sort of global global strategy. So certainly um, keen to keen to to follow you guys more and, and try and help you grow your businesses. So many thanks, Fleming. It's great chatting to you, and I look forward to meeting you in in Dusseldorf. Thank you, Nadine. Looking forward to see you there as well. Cheers. Ciao. Bye. Yes. Bye bye.